you've mentioned that uh what you call it? chem machina yeah yeah so you've mentioned that uh, a, a chemical brain is something you're interested in creating and uh that's a way to get conscious ai soon can you explain what a chemical brain is I want to understand the mechanism of intelligence that's gone through evolution, right? Because the way that the, the way that um, intelligence was c c produced by evolution mm. appears to be the following: origin of life, multicellularity, locomotion, senses. Once you can start to see things come coming towards you, and you can remember the past and interrogate the present and imagine the future, you can do something amazing. Right. So, and I think only in recent years did humans become Turing complete. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh -huh. Yeah. Right. And we'll go. And so that Turing completeness kind of gave us another kick up. Um, but our ability to process that information um, is produced in a wet brain. And, and I think that we are not getting gonna we do not have the correct hardware architectures to have the domain flexibility and the inter, or it, the ability to integrate information and i think intelligence um also comes at a massive compromise of data right now we're obsessing about getting more and more data more and more processing more and more tricks to get dopamine hits so we're gonna when we look back on this going oh yeah that was really cool because when i've chat our chat gpt it made me it made me really feel really happy mm -hmm. <laughs> i got a hit from it but actually it just exposed how little intelligence i use in a in every moment <laughs> I, I, because i'm easily fooled mm -hmm. so what i would like to do is to say well hey hang on what is it about the brain so the brain has this incredible connectivity and it has the ability to um you know as i said earlier about my nephew you know, I just, I went from Bill to Billy and he went, all right, Leroy. Like, mm -hmm. how did he make that leap? Mm -hmm. That he was able to basically, without any training, I extended his name. He went gay and he doesn't like, he wants mm -hmm. to be called Bill. Mm -hmm. He went back and said, you like to be called Lee? I'm going to call you Leroy. Um, so human beings have a ma brilliant ability or intelligent beings appear to have a brilliant ability to integrate across all domains all at once and to synthesize something which allows us to generate knowledge. And, and becoming Turing complete on our own, I don't, although AIs are built in Turing complete things, their, compl their thinking is not Turing complete mm -hmm. in that they are not able to build universal explanations. And that lack of universal explanation means that they're just inductivists inductivism mm -hmm. it doesn't get you anywhere in not, not it's just basically a party trick mm -hmm. it's like you know the, the the i like the um i think it's in the fabric of reality from david deutsch where basically you know it, 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 the farmer is feeding the chicken every day and the chicken's getting fat and happy and the chicken's like i'm really happy every time the farmer comes in and feeds me and then one day the farmer comes in and doesn't and instead of feeding the chicken just wrings its neck mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, and that's kind of, and had the chicken had an alternative understanding of why the farmer was feeding it. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, though, because we don't know what's special about the human mind that's able to come up with these kind of generalities, uh, this universal theories of things, so that's and come up with novelty. I can imagine, because you gave an example, in, you know, about uh, William and Leroy. I, I feel like example like that will be able to see in future versions of uh, large language models. We'll be really, really, really impressed by the humor, the insights, all of it, because it's fundamentally trained on all the incredible humor and insights that's available out there uh, on the internet, right? So we'll be impressed. I think we'll be impressed. Oh, I'm but, impressed. Right. I'm impressed. Increasingly but, so. But we're mining the past. Yes. And what the human brain appears to be able to do is mine the future. Yes. So novelty. It, it is interesting whether these large language models will ever be able to come up with something truly novel. I can show on the back of a piece of paper why that's impossible. And it's like the problem is that, and again, there's a domain experts kind of bullshitting each other. Mm -hmm. The term generative. Yes. Right? Average person think, oh, it's generative. No, no, no. If look, 
if I take the, the numbers between zero and 1,000, mm -hmm. and I train a model to pick out the prime numbers by giving them all the prime numbers between zero and 1,000, it doesn't know what a prime number is. Mm -hmm. Occasionally, if I can cheat a bit, it will start to guess. The, the, it never will produce anything out with the data set because you mine the pass. The thing that I'm getting to is I think that actually current machine learning technologies might actually help reveal why time is fundamental. It's like kind of insane because they tell you about what's happened in the past, but they can never help you understand what's happening in the future without training examples. Sure, if that thing happens again, it's like, um, so I think, so let's think about what large language models are doing. We have the, we have the language, we have all the internet as we know it, you know, language, but also they're doing something else. We're having human beings correcting it all the time. Those models are being corrected. Um, Steered. Corrected. Modified. Tweaked. Is well, yeah, but I mean, cheating. <laughs> well, you could say that training on human data in the first place is cheating. Well, let me. But, the human is in the loop. Sorry to interrupt. Yes, so human is definitely in the loop. Uh, but it's not just human is in the loop. A very large collection of humans is in the loop. I, look, I totally. And that could be. I mean, to me, it's not intuitive that you said prime numbers that the system can't generate an algorithm, right? That the algorithm that can generate prime numbers or the algorithm that can tell you if a number is prime and so on and generate algorithms that generate algorithms that generate algorithms that I, I can that start to look a lot like human reasoning, you know? I don't think, I think again, we can show that on a piece of paper. That's sure. I think there has, you have to have, so this is the failure in epistemology. Like I'm, I'm glad I even can say that word. Let me know what it's it means. Right? It's you like, said it multiple times. I know it's like three times now. Without but, failure, uh, <laughs> quit while you're ahead. Just don't say it again. All right, you did really well. Thanks. <laughs> so I, I, but I, th I think the. So what is reasoning? So coming back to the chemical brain, if I could basically, if I could show that in a, because I mean I'm never going to make an intelligence in in cam machina. Because we don't have brain cells, they don't have glial cells, they don't have neurons. But if I can make, if I can take a matrix, a, a gel, and engineer the gel to have it be a hybrid hardware for repro pre reprogramming, which I think I know how to do, I will be able to process a lot more information and train data, train models billions of times cheaper, mm -hmm. and use cross-domain knowledge. And there's certain techniques I think we can do, but it's still missing, though the 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 abilities of human beings have had to become true and complete. And so I guess the question to, to give back at you and I, is like, how do you tell the difference between trial and error um, and the generation of new knowledge? I think the way you can do it is this, is that you come up with a, a theory, an explanation, inspiration comes from out, yeah, and then you then test that and then you, you see that's going towards the truth. And human beings are very good at doing that. In, and the transition between philosophy, mathematics, physics, and natural sciences, where, and I think that we we can see that. Where I get confused is why people misappropriate the term artificial intelligence to say, "Hey, there's something else going on here." Because I think you and I both agree, machine learning is really good. It's only going to get better. Mm -hmm. We're going to get happier with the outcome. But why would you ever think the model was thinking? Or reasoning. Reasoning requires intention. And the intention, if the model isn't reasoning, the intentions come from the prompter. And the intention has come from the person who programmed it to do it. So I... I um, but don't you think you can prompt it to have intention? Basically start with the initial conditions and get it going. You, where... The you know currently large language models, Chat GPT, only talks to you when you talk to it. There's no reason why you can't just start it talking. But wait, but those initial addition, conditions came from someone starting it. Yes, and that causal chain in there. So that intention comes from the outside. I think that there is something in that causal chain of intention that's super important. Mm -hmm. I I don't disagree. We're going to get to AGI. It's a matter of when and what hardware. I think we're not going to do it in this hardware, and I think we're unnecessarily fetishizing really cool outputs and dopamine hits because yeah. obviously that's what people want to sell us. 
Well, but there could be, I mean, AGI is a, is a loaded term, but there could be incredibly super in, impressive intelligent systems on the way to AGI. So these large language models, I mean, if it appears conscious, if it appears super intelligent, uh, who are we to say it's not? I agree, but I the super intelligence I want, I want to, I want to be able to have a discussion with it about um, coming up with fundamental new ideas that generate knowledge. And if the if the super intelligence we generate can mine novel even in the future that I didn't see in its training set in the past, I would agree that something really interesting is coming on. I'll say that again. If the if the intelligent system, be it a human being, a chat chatbot, something else, is able to produce something truly novel that we I could not predict, even having full audit trail from the past, then I'd be sold. Well, so we should be clear that it can currently produce it can currently produce things that are in a shallow sense novel that are not in the training set. But you're saying truly novel. I think they are in the training set. I think everything it produces comes from a training set. They might be in there's a difference between interp novelty and interpolation. Mm -hmm. We do not understand where these leaps come from yet. That is what intelligence is, I would argue. Those leaps, and some people say, no, it's actually just what will happen if you just do cross-domain training and all that stuff. And that may be true. And I may be completely wrong. But right now, the human mind is able to mine novelty in a way that artificial intelligence systems cannot. And this is why we still all have a job and we're still doing stuff. And, you know, I used ChatGPT for a few weeks. Oh, this is cool. And then it took me too much. I had to... I, well, what happened is it took me too much time to correct it. Then it got really good, and now they've they've done something to it. It's not actually that good. Yeah, right. I don't it's know what's going on. Some censorship. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's interesting, but it will push us humans to uh, characterize novelty better. Like characterize yeah. the, the the novel. Like, what is novel? What is truly novel? What's the difference between novelty and interpolation? I think that this this is the thing that makes me most excited about these yeah. technologies. Is they're going to help me demonstrate to you that time is fundamental and yeah. the unit future is bigger than the than the than the, the present which is why we we are human beings are quite good at um generating novelty because we have to expand our data set and the, and to cope with unexpected things in our environment our environment throws them all at us again we have to survive in that environment and i mean i i, I never say never uh, i would be very interested in how we can get um, cross-domain training cheaply in chemical systems because I'm a chemist and the ke brain, the only sentient thing I know of is a human brain, but maybe that's just me being boring and predictable and not novel. 